All right. Uh, quickly, let me allow Mr. Odumakin to come into this now. The APC has said that it wants to diversify for me, the, uh, the nation's mainstay of the economy, considering the fact that oil prices dropped to uh, an interesting $40 per barrel. Uh, and a lot of people are saying that just how will the nation survive with our reliance and we've just neglected every other sector. But if you look at the other areas the party hopes to diversify to, agriculture, solid minerals, these are areas that um, seemingly now policies need to be made, isn't it, to make sure that these ministries are driven. How do you think, uh, how do you hope, this man, Fire Me, for example, uh, how do we, another man there, do you think these two men are able, will be capable enough and what should they be doing right now to make sure that they galvanize these ministries to achieving the goal of the party? Well, I think that's a larger issue beyond the question of the competencies of these gentlemen about the question of the whole structure of the country itself. Because it's interesting when you have this word about diversification and diversification. How do you want to diversify without changing the present constitution? Because today, what has collapsed is the wrong thing you have done about this oil economy, monoproduct economy of 4 trillion naira every year in the last God no years. But today now, that is in trouble. There is a study that has shown that we have 50 trillion naira in these other areas that we are not touching. But with the constitution says, only the federal government can touch it. Now, if we still want to diversify, there are, you can lay the templates. It's not something you do overnight. You say, agriculture, what can you do in agriculture within 12 months from Abuja, or, or even four years from Abuja. In, in gold alone, this country will make 8 trillion naira. That's twice our present budget annually. Go to the states now where they go there. It's illegal miners who are doing that because the constitution says that the states cannot touch them. It's only the federal government. How, many, how much of the responsibility are assigned to the federal government in the constitution? Can the federal government carry out? The federal government is not doing it. The state that should do it are not empowered to do it by the constitution. So how that conundrum is dissolved. It's a major thing beyond ministers. Because it's not, about, it's not just our policies. It's about the constitution itself. So if we want to get into diversification, that's how we can get to diversification in the recess of it, beyond mouthing it, without looking at the structure of the country itself. That's very critical. And um, the economy today is in a very bad shape. And in fact, and that's why it's important for these ministers now to set you down immediately. I'm going to tackle it. As we are talking now, JP uh, uh, Morgan has delisted her bonds. Barclays is throwing the same line. And this is why, because we have serious foreign exchange volatility in the country, and also the question of macroeconomic challenges. What the CBN has been doing up to now is like a man whose roof is just submerged by water. And that the best solution for him is to go and hold the ceiling with his hands. The deluge will come up at the time and may press him and even crush him. So, right, so now is the time now to begin to solve all these problems. And we need to begin to get down to business to know that there are challenges for us because when all this uh, JP Morgan leaves, this one delays us and the rest, it has serious implications for businesses. Directly? Directly. directly. Even, for, even, for, even directly. In terms, in terms of letter of credits. When any, for any bank in Nigeria, when they issue letter of credits, it's because there are corresponding banks in, this, in Europe and America and the rest of them that will say, okay, yes, even if they don't pay, we will pay. Interesting. But once, once you cannot do that, there's a challenge. As we are talking now, Virgin Atlantic has just has worn down this uh, Nigerian operation, as Sako is Nigerian staff. Uh, there are other companies that today that they are decoupling their activities. And in the midst of that now, we are also pressing the panic button by the kind of sanction we have imposed on MTN. All right, Mr. Odumaki, just hold the thought. We'll talk more about this, but we'll take another moment here on the program. When we return, there's more to say with my guests here and your thoughts also on the program. Stay with us.
Enter the world of luxury Swiss Street dolls. With over 28 years experience, stock is of exquisite historical dolls made from the finest ancient argan ivory wood. A range of exclusive armored dolls, elegant interior dolls, carefully crafted by the world's renowned architects and engineers. At Swiss Street, a doll is much more. Plus, florals and premium quality onyx marbles. Visit Swiss Trade today or call now. Swiss Trade, a blend of beauty and security. Thank you so much for staying with us here on the program. We're still talking about the ministers and the cabinet of President Muhammadu Buhari, the task ahead. Well, the nation, of course, we know that is in a dire situation. Economic situation is very dire, uh, I say again. But then, how can these men turn things around for the nation that expectations on government is very high? Let me go to Honorable Wesley Dawson, who is in our Abuja studio, to get his thoughts about this matter. A lot of... Um, uh, thoughts about uh, foreign investors. Uh, there are fines on some foreign investments in Nigeria, and people are talking about uh, uh, Nigeria's relationship with some other countries and how our business needs to be handled here. With the crop of guys that we have brought in in Nigeria's new government that we've seen today, what are your thoughts about just what they should be doing right about now? Well, I, I, I believe that the first will be to send clear signals that things are changing. And one way to do so is to budget appropriately. I mean, budgets should be more realistic now. It should be based largely on uh, all the efforts. That, that will include um, sales of crude, and then, uh, more importantly, internally generated revenue, which has been a major cause for worry in this country. Because if you look at um, the system we were operating before now, most of the revenue generated internally had been hidden away from being captured in national budgets. You find elements from the generating institutions of the country not being brought before the National Assembly. They were tucked away and to that extent, huge sums of money uh, outside the purview of national use. And once we get that reversed, it means that we will then have more money available uh, for planning, and I think that's, that, that's the first point. Then the second point is to ensure that policies are clearly thought out. I mean, these policies are not uh, to, to take partisan lines. It should be policies that are successive in nature, because you cannot deal with a policy, some assault that policy once one government leaves, and then initiate another policy as soon as another government comes. There is no chance for policy success or policy continuity. So once we lay the framework, uh, for some level of policy continuity in this country, implementation will become uh, that of a matter for methods. Uh, but but uh, if I may quickly come in here, Honorable Idaosa, the APC said that it will feed school pupils a meal, at least a meal every day. That is a lot of money, which we run into almost a trillion every year if they embark on that uh, agenda. Again, the party says that it will pay Nigerians who are vulnerable one way or the other. 25 million, it says, of them, 5,000 naira monthly. That, again, will cost the nation about 2.5 trillion annually if the, uh, this government embarks on that. Now, we have a budget of about 4 trillion naira for 2015. If you take those that I've mentioned, that's almost 4 trillion already. Do you think the nation is going to be in trouble if the APC agenda is followed and the promises that they made at the campaign is followed letter for letter, word for word? Well, well, well my take on that is that if you uh, look at that promise, uh, one would say that formed the substratum of the contract between the APC government and the Nigerian people. Now, I think what the party and the government should be very busy doing now is how do they source that money. And I have just suggested that one of the major ways they can source the money is to turn to internally generated revenue. You will realize that the first major bailout by this government was money from the LNG. 
it was not money from a traditional uh, crude oil access account and the rest of them. So there will always be ingenious methods of generating revenue once we can curtail the wastages. So I'm not too worried whether the party can keep that uh, promise to the Nigerian people. All right. In any case, they will have to start somewhere. Okay. And then they may ask for a review if we all find that there is an overwhelming difficulty. All right. Uh, uh, let me quickly come to Mr. Odumaki. You were the post spokesperson of uh, uh, General Muhammadu Buhari when he was at the CPC. Is he the same man that you worked with? Well, essentially, I is um, he's the same man. But the environment may have uh, been different. And, of course, we don't expect the environment to be the same. Because we are talking about the question of the structure of the country. It's about a system. And is, we talk about there's a limit to which what an individual can do with a system. For instance, I'll give, an, I'll give an example. When you look at recently at the Senate, the, I think it was on the Senator Dino Milaye, who came about about this uh, 64 billion era runway at Abuja Airport. If you do not, if you have not forgotten, under the former administration, this same project came up. It was 63 billion then. That was outcry. They withdrew it. Now, some other guys now have brought out about the same project. Jack it about 1 billion, make it 64 billion. The Senate now say, no, stop it, don't do it. I do not think that the president will be behind that. But there are always guys within every system of in Nigeria, around government, who's, who have their interest and agenda in government. So it takes, and that's why it's important that, look, we, we must begin to build strong institutions that can withstand, that can straighten things out, that can work perfectly about delivery. But to, we should not be looking for a messiah. We should look for a system that can run effectively and that people cannot just bend to their system. But as it is, you know, the country has serious structural challenges. That that won't task, that will, of course, and I won't task the strength of any man, no matter how good. And that's why it's important for us. Look, look there are two things. Professor Ricardo made a statement. In Harvard. Harvard. That if you stand at the seashores and begin to throw all the bad guys into the sea, it does not mean that the good guys begin to float out of the river. So it requires... We must take both our integrity with skillfulness to ensure that we build a system, a structure that's sustainable, All right. that can right. make the country work. All right, let, let me quickly take one or two of your comments, okay? Um, um, uh, someone is saying, Olu Sonjo Wulomi says, I have no doubt in my mind that Buhari will meet our expectation. We must give him ample time. Uh, Olus Njoye Wulomi at uh, Big Sign J. And um, also, uh, well, I, I want to take this, but I, I, my, my producer is telling me that we're, uh, we're out of time. I want to thank you so much, Mr. Nicole Markin, for being on the program. And also, Honorable Wesley Dowsa, who's been talking to us from our Boja studio. And also for you out there, that have been part of this program. Well, you've been such a great company. And on behalf of the team here at China's Television Headquarters in Lagos, I'm Shion Wakimbalo. See you another time. Bye for now.